Hi, in this short video, I'm going to show you how you can use M calibration to calibrate an ANSYS Smith Clear model to a test that you perform that where you don't have a uniform stress state. In my example, I'm going to analyze data from a dog bone shaped tension specimen. In my case, I have force displacement data over a dog bone shaped specimen. Here you see the data. Not the most exciting data, perhaps, but the procedure is. Uh, just the most important thing that I want to show here. So the first step here is to create an ANSYS model of your test specimen and the test. So in this case, I created a dog bone shaped ANSYS a model of this dog bone shaped specimen. It has three regions to it, a grip in the center and another grip. The key here is when you create this model, you need to make sure that the model reproduces the actual experiment, not only the geometry, but also the loading history. So in my case, the test was performed in 0 0.7 seconds. So my finite element simulation should also use the same, same time period. Once you're done creating your material model, it doesn't really matter, the, the finite element model it doesn't matter what material model you put in here, we will replace that later. The second step is to click under environment and then write input file. This allows you to save an input file uh, of this particular model. If we go to look at that model, uh, it's uh, generated and there's a DAT file, an APDL file generated by ANSYS. It's a pretty long file with all the commands in it. There, there are two things we need to do here. The first one is to replace the material model. So M calibration is going to drive this calibration. So we want M calibration to write a uh, material model definition that is then used in the ANSYS simulation. And the way to do that is to read in these uh, material models here. So I just removed the default material model that came from ANSYS mechanical. And then I put in this command input M, M cal material and I used the same material model for all of these three regions that we had in the ANSYS simulation. Um, so that's pretty straightforward. The last thing we need to do, we also need to instruct ANSYS to save the force displacement predictions from the finite element simulation into an external file. That's something you can do uh, using uh, a few APDL commands. Here are some of them written here. So you can take a look at these. I'm not going to go through these commands in great detail here, but they're very standard. It's a do loop, looping over all the steps and increments and writing the time, the displacement and force from the finite element simulation into the file of interest. And uh, in this case, this file is called results.data. Now, once we have that set up, you may want to run this manually just to make sure that it works. But the, the, really the key now, and the only remaining step, is to set up M calibration. So here is my experimental data. It's going to just take a look at how we set this up in M calibration. And uh, the way you do that is you set up a load case as a general external solver load case. You read in your experimental data file from the experimental test. And then you specify the name of the material model that you want to generate. In this case, this file name, mcal underscore material.imp, can be whatever you want, but it should be the same as uh, needed in the, um, in the ANSYS file that I showed earlier. And here it is, mcal material imp. So that's important, otherwise it wouldn't find that. Um, so, Let's go back to M calibration again. Then the command that specifies uh, that M calibration, so M calibration knows what ANSYS uh, run to use, is a file called run it. So I'm going to open that file here. And uh, there is run it.bat. I can open this with a text editor. You can show you the file that I generated. It's basically just a command line version of launching. ANSYS, and you can use whatever version of ANSYS you like, but here are the command lines that are of interest. The particular one here is tension.dat, that's the file we just looked at, and uh, you can set how many CPUs you want to run with as well. Go back to M calibration, so we have that here. We also need to specify the solver type. This is so M calibration knows to generate this material model file in ANSYS format. And then 
we already have uh, generated the results within this BAT file, and actually there was called Yosuranet in my example. And this is the name of the file that the ANSYS IMP file generates. We just read it in, and we're done. So that's how you would set this up. Now we're actually ready to just run this and have it automatically calibrate the material. So I'm just going to click a run once here, and then we'll wait a few seconds for it to finish. And there it is. Uh, I'm running this on a very small laptop, so it took a little bit longer than you, it would take on a faster uh, PC. But that's, that's really how you can do it. Remember, you can have as many experimental tests as you like for the calibration. You can calibrate any material model that works in ANSYS here, any of the built-in ANSYS material models and the polyumod material models. And remember three steps. The first step is to create an ANSYS mechanical model that reproduces your experiment. Second step is to export that model into an IMP file or DAT file with, with the ANSYS commands. Third step is to modify those commands so that they use the material model that you want to use and also export the force displacement data into external file. And the last part is to set it up in mCalibration to launch ANSYS to run that file for each evaluation of material model parameters. This is fully automatic at that point and it works very well. If you have any questions, you can ask them below.